All right, uh, greetings to our Greek class of 2024 grade 12 learners. My name is Keliboni Mutsapi from Mizamo High School. Uh, today I will be having a lesson on your paper two based on the item analysis in the trial exam that you wrote. Uh, I will be looking at some challenging questions based on the analysis of the province. So, firstly, uh, our paper two we know has got three main chapters. Question two, agric marketing, 35 marks. Question three, production factors, 35 marks. And then lastly, question four, basic agric genetics, 35 marks as well. So, the main challenging questions went on question two question three, only one question, and then on question four as well. I'll be looking at some of those subsections where the average performance was too low. So on our question four, it was on question two, sorry, question two. It's on question 2.1 on marketing functions, and then on question two as well on marketing channels, that was 2.4. And then on our question three production factors, most learners, the average is good, but there was just one sub question there on 3.5, that was management as a production factor. And then on our question four, agric genetics, the challenging sub question there was mainly on 4.4, uh, the breeding systems where the average is at 13, it's too low. All right, so let's start with the first one in agric marketing question two. Your 2.1 was on marketing functions. I will show you the sample question, but let's quickly remind ourselves about the four functions that we have. It's processing, transportation, storage, and packaging. Those are our four marketing functions. So what you need to understand here is the key defining weight for each function so that you are able to understand the question when you go to exam. Uh, on processing, it's where you are changing. It cut here, I'm not sure. Oh, okay, sorry for that. So on processing, it's where you changing the raw product into another product. You are adding the value. So Elena must look for those uh, key defining words. Transportation, it's where you will see a vehicle even if they're giving you in the form of a diagram, you always see a vehicle. And secondly, it's the key word that there's movement of goods or movement of our products from one point to another. So that uh, seeks to explain the marketing function, transportation. And then the third one, it's packaging. It's where now we are having containers or the box. You are trying to contain your acrylic produce there. And then the key defining words for this one, there will always be things like uh, the guidelines when you are packaging a product, as well as the design features for your container. Then the, four marketing, the fourth marketing function is storage, where you keep your products safe to prolong their shelf life, such as using the refrigerators there. All right, now going back to your trial exam, this is one of the sampled questions that I took out so that we can quickly look at them. So what happened here, the examiner used two strategies. The first one was to use the diagram to illustrate these functions, as you can see. So when you see things like uh, the box, the bottle, you must know that it, it leads to packaging. And then when you see things like a vehicle, a truck, then it, tries to show you that they, they are transporting, transport, so it's a vehicle there. So the examiner used those diagrams there in your question paper. Secondly, the examiner described, the, they gave you descriptions, then you are supposed to identify the marketing function. For instance, 2.1.1a, it was saying, identify the function there based on the description, putting agricultural products into containers. So the key defining word there was container, as you can see there, uh, putting your acrylic products into the containers there. So you should know that now you are packing your acrylic produce there. And then the second one was saying making the product available using different routes. So the problem there might have been the language 
the route there. So it is the transport that is moving in the route there to transport our acrylic products there. So these are some of the questions that the examiners might use when it comes to marketing functions. Uh, another marketing function, uh, the manner in which is assessed, it's to look for the advantages. They will say processing and then they will always ask you advantages. As you can see there uh, in 2.1.4, sorry, 2.1.2, give two advantages of processing. Now, there are general advantages there, but sometimes the examiner will be tricky there. They will say for the producer or the advantages for the customer, like this one. So they were specific to say not just advantages, but you need to specify those that are benefiting the customer there. So if you say, for instance, processing, in, uh, it creates jobs. Now that one benefits the consumers. You must be careful when you list the advantages there. All right, let's move on to the other sub-question sub, sub that was challenging. It was on 2.4 marketing channels. So we know that we've got three marketing systems free marketing, uh, controlled marketing where there's governmental intervention and cooperatives as well. Now with free marketing where anyone can sell anything to anyone, there are different channels that we use there, about five of them, uh, farm gate, fresh produce, auction or stock sale, direct or contract there as well as internet marketing. So those ones are the channels. They are only used under free marketing system. So at, at the channels as well, the, the learner must also understand the key defining words. Like farm gate is where you are selling at the farm, directly at the farm. So that one is farm gate. It's where you produce, but the customers will come and buy the products at the farm. So there will be also advantages and disadvantages at that one. Fresh produce, the key defining word there, there's an agent now. The producer produces, there's an agent who's going to market the product for on behalf of the producer. The other one is auction, it's whereby now we are selling to the highest bidder there. So that is the key word. You'll see maybe sometimes in the form of a diagram, the people are auctioning their livestock, there. there's a board, people are raising hands. That is a, an indication of auction there. And then the direct way you have a contract, maybe with a retail shop, you take your produce directly with them to spa, maybe you are selling your, your crops there. And then with internet, it's where you are selling online. Uh, you don't have to go to a market and buy there. There is no exchange at the till there. You just purchase everything online, you market your products online, right? Let's quickly look at the sample question on that one based on your trial exam. You are given it in a form of a diagram there. Now, the question was saying the name the marketing channel depicted above. So that one is clear. You just have to understand the marketing channel. How were you going to see the, there was a description in the statement there. The picture below shows a marketing channel where a farmer sells cucumbers directly from its point of production. So that was the, the key defining word the, from its point of production. So it means you just produce, the consumers will come and buy from your farm. So the marketing channel there was farm gate. That's why I'm saying the, the, the learner must always understand the key defining words in there. All right. And then the other question they will always ask the disadvantages or the advantages. But what you must be careful on here, they will say give two advantages. Don't stop there. Make sure you read the whole question. For instance, this one was saying to the farmer, not just to anyone. Advantages to the farmer, not to the consumer. So you can say we get them at a lower price. That one, it's, it's an advantage to the consumer, but it was saying to the farmer. So the learner must always be careful there when they are reading these questions. All right, let's quickly move on now to another uh, challenging sub-question. It was now on question three, this one, the production factors. So the learners, most learners, most schools, they performed very well on this question. 
However, on the last question, sub-question, the 3.5 management, there was poor performance there as well. That was noticed. All right, so management, uh, what you need to know with management as a production factor, it's management or managerial principles, components of strategic management, as well as the, the explanation of that concept of strategic management, management skills, as well as risk management strategies. So on the managerial principles, it's you have to plan as a manager, planning, organizing, controlling, monitoring, as well as playing a leading role there. As, so those are the, the roles of a manager. Then we've got components of strategic management. So with strategic management, you are trying to foresee the future challenges that can uh, hamper the market there. So you then have the you have to put down some of the things for you to cap the problems in the future. So the components are always three that you need to put down. You must set a vision as a manager. You must uh, write down or dot down the mission of your business is there. So you always have a vision as the as a manager. The second thing you need. It's the vision of the business. Where do you want to take your business? How do you see your business in the future? And then thirdly, the other component that is also important is setting of the goals. All right. So the management skills now that you have, uh, it's problem solving. As a farm manager or as a manager in the business, you're always solving the problems. You must, you need that skill as well, because there are, there are many problems in a business. Second skill that you need as a manager is decision making. You are making decisions on a daily basis. Sometimes the decisions that you, you have to make, they are very tough. Sometimes they are sudden. So you, you need that skill as a manager. Uh, another skill you need, you are managing the finances there as a manager. So you need that skill, financial management skill as you are managing the finances of the business and then this one will then be assisted by capital uh, under capital as a production factor you have got those financial management systems you use like income statement uh, budget statement the balance sheet so those are the tools you use for you to be able to manage your finances thoroughly and properly as a manager all right and then another skill you need is conceptual skill as well as the interpersonal skills like the ability to communicate with your workers or other people. You've got clients, you've got workers, you've got uh, other managers in different, uh, the supervisors in different sectors of the business. So interpersonal skills are very important in the, uh, as a skill that you need as a firm manager. All right, and then We've got risk management strategies. These are the strategies you put in place to minimize the risk that are facing your business. One of them is hedging, which is entering into future contracts. Hedging, you enter into future contracts there. So that when you are producing, the produce is ready. Already you have a contract with another supermarket that I'm supplying you with this amount of this product so that you don't produce the product, but you don't have a market for it. So that strategy, we refer to it as hedging. You also take insurance as a businessman. So whenever you have a business, you take insurance in case there are unforeseen circumstances. For instance, there is drought, there are wildfires, they destroy your production, they, then you are always safe. And then the other strategy is diversification. So you don't only specialize on one product there. So that even if there is drought, the crops are not successful, but I still have livestock there. So the, 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 I won't have to shut down the whole uh, farming enterprise. You also do the one we call risk sharing. This one applies mostly under the co-ops, cooperatives where a group, of, a group of people, they come together, they join forces and then they share the risk, they are going to share the benefits as well. All right, so this question, it was a little bit challenging to our learners, we don't know, but the most question there was components. Most learners, they did not master that one. All right, 
Let's look at the other sub-question that was challenging. It was on question for acrylic genetics. Most learners have improved their performance on this chapter. However, they, uh, the learners did not perform so well on breeding systems 4.4. So this one, it requires uh, your grade 10 basic information, understanding different animal breeds. Because sometimes the examiner will just give you the names. They won't say these breeds are different. They will say a Holstein breed was mating with a Nguni breed. So you need to first have that background of understanding different animal breeds. All right. So under breeding, it's whereby you select a certain in animals, those that have desired characteristics, and then you allow them to mate so that the next generation can perform better. So after having selected your breeds, there, there are various methods that we use, uh, organic okay, systems that we use to breed our animals. So what the learner needs here, again, it's the key defining words. So we've got different breeding systems, outcrossing, cross-breeding, in-breeding, line-breeding, species breeding as well as upgrading. So with outcrossing, uh, the key word there, you are breeding same species, it is the same species there. However, uh, the key defining word, these species are not related. I, I normally teach this using uh, the tribes, human beings. So it's like you've got same species, same tribe. I'm close, I'm close, I'm close. However, they are not related. So that is called outcrossing. And then the second one is cross breeding. This one is different breed. It's like now we will chat this I'm close, I'm close different tribes all together. So the examiner in this, uh, for instance, in this question, you have got a beef breed that is different from that of a dairy breed. You've got a, a Holstein, uh, it's breeding with a, a Hereford there. All right, let's quickly go back. Uh, the other one is in breeding, closely related. So it's like or a son and the mother there. They are closely related, those ones. And then line breeding, they are related, but not in the same family. But they share a common ancestor, like the cousins. Maybe your father and my mom, they share a common uh, parent there. So that one is called the line breeding. This one, like relatives there. And then the other one, uh, as we wrap up, is species breeding. This one, it's not just different breeds, but different species all together but they are related or they are similar like a goat and a sheep they are similar in terms of the genetic makeup but they are different species a horse and a donkey and then the last one is upgrading which is whereby now you are taking the superior animal it's breeding with it's mating with the one that is inferior so that we can improve the next generation all right so those were some of the difficult uh, sub-questions that we, we, uh, we highlighted on our question to trial exam, paper two, sorry. And then next time we're gonna do other subsections as well. Thank you for having this.